welcome back to Great Day Hope After Harvey. Even though the storm, this one is gone, what remains for a lot of people is an emotional storm. You know, how do you deal with what happened? Like we heard from our Nacia a little bit earlier. Joining us now is Robert Hilliker with the Lovett Center. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Right, what is the Lovett Center? The Lovett Center is a community of health and professionals that now represents over 65 clinicians, uh, many of whom are there in their own practices, but who come together to practice under the same roof. Yeah, anytime someone goes through trauma, th mm -hmm. that trauma has a tendency to stay with us. Yeah, um, you know, people handle trauma, uh, everybody handles it a little bit differently based on their own factors of resiliency and the, the amount of support they have in their life, family and friends. So. You know, there's no one way to go through a natural disaster. Yeah, right. All right, uh, Arne, so you wanted to ask him something. Yeah, so um, I'm, my concern is, and I'm sure a lot of other parents are feeling the same way, with Kristen returning to school on Thursday, and with this just happening, um, will it affect her in school, or how, what kind of coping skills um, can I provide for her to help her yeah. with this Having transition? Having actually gone through it. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, you and I had an opportunity right. to speak for a few minutes before we right. came on, and it was lovely because um, I think, Kristen, that you've handled this beautifully. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think in part because you've watched how your mom has handled it, and she's handled it with a lot of grace and a lot of mm -hmm. uh, gratitude and a lot of um, really just faith. Yeah, because uh, when you remain the, calm, kids yeah. can remain calm, yeah. right? Yeah, so, yeah. so the, the, the best thing to help Kristen cope is yeah. um, ensuring that you have what you need to cope yes. um, because she's looking to you. Yes. And, um, and you know, uh, th there was a, 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 an analyst a long, long time ago who said, um, how do we know that um, children are, are normal, that everything's mm -hmm. okay with them? Mm -hmm. And he said, um, are they playing? Mm. Did they play? Are you playing, Kristen? And mm -hmm. <laughs> She's like, no, not, not, just, not quite yeah. yet. But, not but you can yet. smile. But I think, but you can smile, and you can, mm -hmm. and you can reflect on your experience, and you can mm -hmm. talk about things, mm -hmm. and and know that people are here for you, and know that your mother's here for you, and that that this whole community around you um, is here for you. All right. Uh, on our Facebook page, Sam says, <laughs> "I went through the trauma of Harvey, mm -hmm. but does that mean I have PTSD? What would be some symptoms of? Yeah. It's kind of like PTSD in a sense, right? Right. So, so I want to be for careful about that, right? Yeah, because." For some um, while everybody in the city has endured some level of trauma, either bearing witness to trauma or directly experiencing trauma themselves, it does not necessarily mean that they have PTSD. Yeah. In fact, a small number of people who have been impacted by this trauma will actually have post-traumatic stress disorder, an diagnosis which is an actual yes. diagnosis that has about eight diagnostic criteria yeah. that have to be met. Um, and, and so the big thing, though, I think that's important is not focusing on on the diagnosis, but focusing on what people need in the face of trauma. Um, for some people, this feels like a, a lowercase t trauma. It's not been, they've not lost everything. For others, this is a capital T trauma. They've lost everything that's important to them. And I think that we as a community have to really pay attention to what is it that our that our neighbors are needing? What is it that uh, that they've gone through? And how can we support them? Because fear, I think, is at the base of a lot of things for people, right? You know this from a lot of just any kind of uh, mental issue, issues, yeah. emotional issues, fear. And when you lose your foundation, yes. and that's your, your home, your yes. place that you go home yes. to figure things out. When you lose that, you're off. When you lose a job, you're off. And yes. so yes. Um, just kind of trying to, I guess you just have to figure out, all right, yes, but my life is here. And if I'm alive, I have the power to change my situation. And, but it's, it's easier said than done. I say that from a place of not having gone through that this time. I've been through other things, but not yeah. this. Yeah. All right, let's go to Virginia, who's part of our audience. Hello, Virginia. Good morning. My question is, as an associate teacher in HISD, how should the teachers deal with the kids and help them cope? Because they've gone through, we, we think about the adults encountering PTSD, but on a child's level, what should we do as teachers and instructors, administrators, and whatever mm -hmm. in HISD or yeah, any school district? And the tough part district? for you all is that every child has a different experience, right? Exactly. And so it's like you're in that collective classroom. Every child's different. And so your jobs are going to, I think, be much tougher uh, this year. Yeah, you know, I think it's a wonderful question, and I appreciate you speaking to this. Um, I, I think that you should do what teachers do best, which is, which is patience, love, and kindness. <laughs> um, that that. As children uh, negotiate a new experience like this, they're going to need people 
um, loving and supportive people to be there and to be patient with them as they make this adjustment. And I think teachers are excellent at that. Yeah, teachers are already counselors, already second parents. At That's the right. Times. And you all do some work in HISD, so you're... We do, yeah. We're, we're in a number of different schools that are, uh, that are particularly at risk, um, and we're continuing to expand our, our presence there. I think in, in the aftermath of Harvey, um, we'll, we'll especially look at how we can be helpful to schools. Yeah. All right. Hi, Tanya. Hello. What's how your question? You? I have a cousin that lost a newborn about 10 years ago, and due to the storm, she lost all the memorabilia she had. So my question is, is there any place one can go to seek counseling? Yes. All right, and this is an important point. That's what's kind of at the heart of a lot of people who've lost things. It's not really the yeah. things, it's the memories. Yes. And it's, uh, especially in a case like this, where it would have been, you know, baby clothes or, yes. or you know, pictures even. A lot of yes. us lost pictures before the digital age. Right. Yeah. So first of all, I appreciate the question. I think it's a really difficult experience for anybody to lose um, the things that, because these are not things, these are right. memories right. Um, that people Can't carry with them in, in, in objects that they have. And, and the loss of that is tremendous. Um, you asked about resources, and I think that's, that's something that we can help with. Um, we have listed on our website, the, the lovettcenter.com has a, a Harvey resource page that we're updating weekly. Um, even daily sometimes based on uh, what the, you know, what we're hearing in terms of community agencies that are out there doing counseling, doing pro bono service, and then we have a number of clinicians who've elected to do pro bono counseling service. So there are plenty of resources out there and it's just a matter of getting linked up to them. So. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Arnasia had mentioned, you know, being in there with your family, but also your extended family, which for a lot of us uh, are our pets. And the SPCA right now, they're still rescuing pets. Yeah, uh, yeah they're still rescuing pets, tr hoping to, to make connections with a lot of people. And so a lot of folks are out there looking for those pets. And, and, and let me just speak to that for a second. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when you're afraid, that pet is, is really family to a lot of people. Yes. We had a lot of folks who called before the storm yes. and said, I'm not leaving my home because I can't show up someplace with a pet. Yes. Well, it, it, what's been tremendous about uh, what, what Baker Ripley has done at NRG and what the American Red Cross has done at George R. Brown is the inclusion of pets. Mm -hmm. I think that was a, a brilliant choice on their part to ensure that those people um, had a place to go with their pets. I also know of another resource, Finding Rover. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but FindingRover.com is, is um, uh, a site used to link people with lost pets. Which and when is we wonderful. come back, we have the SPCA. Oh. Uh, they are also helping to reunite folks. And if you can take a pet into your home and be a foster parent for a while, they desperately need that as well. We'll talk about that when we come back.